Value stip. We're drafting for value. Thanks for hanging out, folks. Thanks for waiting for me. Draft's almost about to fire. Mm. Bob is value. You're not wrong there. <clears throat> Bob's value, Plowander's value, Sword of Feist, <laughs> Sword of Feist, and uh, Shark Typhoon, both value. is sort of value, sort of not really. Elspeth is value. Ravages of War can be, but it's not always. Rager is certainly value. Could take Gear Hulk. I think it's either Gear Hulk or ECD. Cruxa? Yeah. Oh, Resto should play really well in a value step, right? It's a value facilitator for sure. There's some other cards here that play well with it. Sword, FTK, Ghost Rider, Avenger. I'll get my blink on. Perfect. Moldrifter's like the best value creature here. It works really well with it. Uh, ECD and Resto. We got the Raven Inspector. So the way we're doing our step is, um, if the fixing counts for something that you've already drafted, that you can take it as fixing. So like Mox wasn't an option because it didn't fix for anything that we had that we drafted already. Ancient Tomb though, we've got all kinds of colorless sources. We've got all kinds of we've got to fix for that colorless. You could also argue that it's two mana for one land, which is pretty pretty good value. Ugin is pretty high value. Swords is not value. Ancestral Vision is value, but it's slow as shit. I think we're gonna take the Signet. I think we're gonna take more fixing. Colonnade works. Colonnade works with the um, our stipulation for fixing, and then it's also you know, it's a land and a creature, right? It's gotta be some kind of value. Elspeth would be good if there wasn't Colonnade in the pack. I'd be happy to grab Elspeth. Flicker Wisp makes sense for the same ways reason that Resto did, and that we're gonna be blinking cards that generate value. It also really works with like ECD and you know a lot of stuff that we have here already. Max Pearl get passed because the way because of how the step is due. we're we're drafting a value step we can draft fixing for cards that we already have but pack one pick one it's not like we had a white card yet gaining life can be value.
correct magic wiser. wiser. Put back two or three, they're viable picks. How do we take the signet without a green card? Well, fixing for white is still relevant. I don't think Academy Ruins counts as value. Mother of Ruins Bricking Removal is value. Mother of Ruins counts. Planeswalkers definitely count. <laughs> Mana Drain would be a little loosey-goosey here, right? It's fixing in the same way that Ancient Tomb is fixing. You are getting more than a counterspell. It is higher value than just actual counterspell. Maybe it does count. What does Pao Pai think? I'll hover it. Hey, Contiv. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 26 months. Relative value is value. <laughs> I mean, in a way, you're getting, like, a free Mana Vault activation or something. It's, like, half a card. This is a high value pack. We're gonna take Fractured Identity, but if Fractured Identity wasn't in the pack, we'd still be very happy with Skydiver. Identity's fucked up. That's a fucked up card. So there's a few cards here that fix, fit the stip. Um, I think a lot of people would take Teferi. Wins can be if you overload it, but I think I'm gonna take Blade Splicer. I think Blade Splicer is more important to our deck, and Teferi has a higher chance of wheeling. Because it's two colors. Blade Splicer is nice, like we're sitting here with Flicker Wisp and Resto, and those cards don't generate value with Teferi, and they generate super good value with Blade Splicer. And we have Ancient Tomb. I think I think it's just good. I think it's just a good pickup. You'll be surprised if Teferi wheels. Well, think about how late we got that colonnade, and the fact that people are passing us Fractured Identity and Teferis and stuff in the first place. I think we're the only blue-white drafter, but I could be wrong. Someone might go into blue-white, too. So Sun Titan works. Sun Titan is value. There's also Thirst for Knowledge. I think either is fine. I'm gonna go with the Titan. Stormcaller's value. It's not value with anything that we have. I'm gonna take the Wildwood for fixing. The stip for this cube is value. All value all the time. Skyclave is definitely value. Also plays very well with our blink effects. Shingy Mage doesn't have a hit. I guess we're taking Elishnorin. Seachrome came back. Because blue-white is open. There's more value in the mana base. Teferi did not come back. Someone might have, might have grabbed it on spec. This might be the only time that we get an actual removal spell. It's also a removal spell that kind of fits the step right, with the overload. Yeah, we already have one fetch land for the Titan value. I think we're also likely to have something else in the graveyard by the time we play Titan.
when I spoiled Skyclave, did I think it would be as good as it is in Eternal Formats? Um, I had a pretty good idea of how good Skyclave was going to be. Uh, but I didn't think it was going to be, like, a 4 of in Eternal Formats. Like, maybe Modern, but I was surprised that it got... I thought it was going to be, like, a 1 of in Legacy Death and Taxes, right? I didn't think it was... It's hard to really know until you play with it. I did think it was going to see Legacy play, but it's hard to hard to say exactly how good, right, until you actually get to cast it. Thinks is value. I wouldn't call it good value, but it is value. Shovelock Isle, on the other hand, that's some good value. What a value-laden pack. Heath, Glenelindra, Caracas, Teferi, all great. Teferi works really well with Sun Titan. Yeah, this is fucking tough. Um, let's see, we have seven lane picks already. So we're gonna need at least like five more playables out of this pack. That shouldn't be that hard. I really like Teferi here. Glenn does, Glenn does uh, shore up a weakness in the deck and plays well with Resto and stuff and ECD. Very tricky pack. Or do we have to take Krasis? Like, Time Warp's definitely value, especially with Planeswalkers and stuff. But I think Krasis is more directly value. Fixing them. Control magic makes sense. We're just gonna grab even more fixing. Are we gonna play enough green for cultivate? And maybe, right? Interesting pack. Sylvan Library, Monastery Mentor, and Gideon. You can make arguments for all of them. The way that our curve works, I think Gideon is probably better than Sylvan Library. With our curve, like the turn one signet, turn two. Gideon play is really strong. This is a good wheel. It wasn't what I was hoping. After 5 mana Teferi didn't wheel, I figured that 3 mana Teferi wasn't going to either, but I wanted it to. Maybe if the other Teferi player had like Vendillion Click or or uh, Venser themselves, then maybe they would have taken Caracas, and then we could have gotten 3 mana Teferi back. I just think 3 mana Teferi plays really well with uh, Sun Titan. Like you play it, you bounce something, they kill it, and then you Sun Titan it back later. It's just so brutal. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, Scoot Puff Jr. Things the result. Things the 24 months. The two years. You're drowning in the value. Drowning in it.
had some in interesting options out of our sideboard. I don't think we're gonna play the Cultivate. I want to, but I don't think we are. I think I like cutting Frost Titan. We'll kind of have a lot going on here at the top. I'd like Frost Titan better if we had like some clones, if we had the image and Metamorph and stuff. It is not a bad one to like Resto Blink. Tap down two things. I don't think two islands is going to be enough. So our white count is currently 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15 <laughs> with the signets, which don't help me play the turn one thing, but I think we can cut a couple planes for sure. And then our blue count is currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is like enough, but barely enough. I like going up to 8. And then our green count is one, two, three, four. Which is okay. I kind of like playing one more green. Five sources for two cards. If you draw the forest naturally, then like your vista gets to go and get something else. And like the wildwood becomes more of a card, right? It's like less of a fixer and more value because you can activate it. Hey, Angry Chewy, thanks for the 12 months. The full year. You like the new artwork? Oh, I've had Spring Loom Druid for a while, but but thank you. It's usually not up behind me. It's my largest piece of original magic art. So it's the one that's like recognizable. The only one that can attempt to to fill the uh, the Greendale flags void. You want to cut green? Yeah. <laughs> we have all this great fixing and, and doko and stuff, yeah. No, I'm not doing that. Why not Greendale flag? Because I swapped it out for this fucking thing. What do you mean, why not Greendale flag? You think I should have left it up, but just put this one over it? Like, one on top of the other? We were doing a, um... To actually answer your question, we were doing a, uh... A farmland step, so green creatures, things that interacted with lands and farming. And so during the step, during the drafting portion, I swapped in Spring Bloom Druid, because it's kind of perfect. I thought it was fitting the step. Spring Loom Druid every day. Uh, people like the Greendale Anus. I also like the Greendale Anus. It's been a mainstay for a while. It does a lot of good things. Gives new viewers a reasonable introduction to me, you know? Like, yeah, the guy with the anus behind him. He probably takes himself way too seriously. That's probably... Mount a lazy Susan and rotate the art. Well, that's an idea. That's an idea. There's enough room in here. I could, like, move the desk forward. And just have a rotating background. Oh, what about what about uh, put a put a motor in it, and then it's slowly rotating constantly, like like that one building where there's a restaurant that's like constantly spinning, so your your view changes 
as you eat your meal. a ceiling fan and hang my art from the blades of the fan. Oh, that's that's an idea. Oh uh, yeah, I wonder why nobody does that. What if I spun and not the artwork? I think that'd be a lot more expensive. I've got a pretty heavy desk. Much larger rotating platform. What is boast? When you attack, you get to activate it once. You'll see. So now that I've attacked, I can activate it. And now I get my boast ability, which is I get a 1-1. Not a bad little bit of value, huh? these land drops, I should probably hold on to this Amiria's Call. Me and the chair rotating and trying to play while rotating. Like, what are those, uh... Sometimes, sometimes, uh, fancy rich drummers, as part of their live set, like the, they'll have their, their drum kit, like, stapled to the fucking platform, and they'll, like, rotate up, and then it'll start spinning, and they'll, like, do their drum solo. I know the drummer for Slipknot did that for some shows. But I don't think he was the first one. I think he was copying someone. You think it was Rush? That sounds right. Do that, but instead of like doing a drum solo, you're just like streaming Magic the Gathering. <laughs> I think you I think it would make more sense if you were doing like a um if you were like a speedrunner, you know. Or if you were a fighting game player or something. Something where there's like a where your APM matters more than magic. Well, that was very not very cash money of you opponent. I got so many more fucking warriors than they do from all my boasting. Like, they can keep playing Gonti, but I'll keep bouncing it and they'll keep dying to my board. A lot of the stuff they could get off Gonti. It would help them stabilize, like, Glenn answers, too. I'll fucking counter that. Probably shouldn't be. It's probably bait, but whatever. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Little Ledger is so disheartening. They fucking four for one dust with Mind Twist. And they're... We resolved two spells, but those spells had so much value caked into them. Sometimes all you need is two spells. I'm gonna cut Elishnorin. 
doesn't seem like the right matchup for it. We can either bring in Frost Titan or like this fucking awful card. Maybe Trigon Predator. With only five green sources though, I'm less keen on Tri Trigon. Sure. I hope we draw some non lands at some point. You thought Usher was loose? I mean, it's a little weird, right? It's not an intuitive add to the stack. But it is value. It does have value built into it. And it can do, like, what, what you just saw. Make a little army. Playing Inspector and cracking it. Also a line. What I like doing is going next turn Inspector, rest of Blink Inspector. And just advancing my board as much as possible, as quickly as possible. We might be getting twisted for three here. Also fine. And then you can reset it with Resto. And clear the card next turn, probably. I don't know. I'd... In my head, I've just been trained to clear Planeswalkers. All my instincts as a magic player. Every time my opponent plays a walker, it's like, ah, kill it! <laughs> but Caleb, the opponent's at one. Why aren't you attacking him? Gah, kill the walker! a land drop, yeah. There's an argument to cracking Prismatic Vista on your turn play around Opposition Agent, but I don't think that's going to be a factor here. Can anyone tell me why? <laughs> yeah, you gotta jump. card to be thinking about if we go to a game three.
nine mana? What the fuck costs nine mana? Oh. Okay. Fair enough. You can indeed respond to an evoke trigger with a blink effect. So if we had seven mana, Moldrifter and Resto, we could evoke Moldrifter and then Resto blink it. Just more value. Yeah, we get to replay our shit. Why well, didn't go too crazy with my ancient tomb tapping? What I draw? So we don't need both forests. I'm not discarding a plains. It's already seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fuck. We don't discard Mold Drifter, do we? Flickering Chalice is good. It's a solid line. I like getting the forest down because it gives us an option to play the Oko next chain. Go Oko plus three of an inspector. Right now, the uh, the thing is, the opponent already like has a ton of mana. And they've already played their upheaval. So I kind of just want to get back on the board. Yeah, I liked, uh, I liked Oko plus 3 with Inspector better, and then either turn the Inspector or the Clue into a 3-3. Three, three. But with the Winter Orb down, it was no longer a line. There's no way to tap Boros Signet into Oko. Wisping one of our lands also would have been good. That's right. If you wisp one of your lands here, then you get to play Oko next turn. Well, shit.
Would I take a million dollars to never play Magic again? That's an interesting question. I don't think so. I think the only way I would take like a lump sum of money to not play Magic again is if I could like literally retire at that point. And I don't think you can retire in your early 30s off a million dollars with inflation and shit. Hey, good evening, Krishwan. How do you know what my standard of living is, Power of Pi? <laughs> and why are you doing the math on when I when when I can retire? Runs. Nobody watches that shit. No more Greendale flag? Yeah, I sold it. I sold the Greendale flag for booze money. behind me? That's Springloom Druid. Hmm, yes. Would you like to tap your Construct and Winter Orb to activate Urza again? You wouldn't? You'd rather lose? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you. I guess if they tap Winter Orb, we also get to untap this during Wildwood. Gives us another attacker. And the Crocus can bounce the Urza on board. They probably didn't have a hit. Oh shit, what up? Did I get 500 million for it? You know what? I did not. Hey, Copilot, thanks for the 28 months. Maybe, maybe they didn't have a hit ninja killer. The people was already in the graveyard. Their hit would have needed to answer like three creatures. It was kind of hard. <laughs> Through a Glen. Oko and Usher work really well together too. The one time I saw Usher in a deck like this is because it had Oko to like turn the one ones into three threes for value. Would I rather have 100k now or a million in 10 years? I mean, who knows what I would want 10 years from now, right? Probably 100k now. 10 years is a while. 10 years is a hot minute. People die, right? Ships attacked. Made a token.
Sweet. <laughs> oh, we just got vintage cubed. Once again, not a, probably not an Elishnorn matchup. I could see bringing the Elishnorn back in if they end up being twin, if they have like a twin backup plan. And from what we've seen, I'd rather have Ravages. You heard the chat needs economics opinions. Yeah. In your opinion, why don't countries simply use the free market to decide what the age of consent should be? Actually, don't, don't, don't answer that. <laughs> I was just trying to mash, like, a couple of libertarian opinions together in a way that didn't make sense. You're here for the impending emote only mode. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Vincent. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Hope you had a good one. <laughs> this is a great time. Great time to tune in. Mom's getting in. Getting fucking in there. Oh, Mom shit. should not have gotten in. Should not have gotten in there. Hmm. Hey, J2 Sizzle. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for 18 months. This game doesn't come down to me blocking Inkwell. We aren't blocking. We could. We can rest a blink our flicker wisp to flicker out the island and get a block in there. The issue with that line, let's see, so we're taking seven here. We definitely don't have lethal on their next turn. So maybe we have to block just to buy a turn. Where's that damn Elishnor in? Just 
So if we gain two, we go up to 12. We're taking seven for sure from the Inkwell, which means we're at essentially five. So any, any land kills us with the Siege Gang Commander anyway. Yeah, we're just fucking dead, right? Blocking with Wisp was better. I mean, it has Trample. Inkwell has Trample. We soaked four damage that way. I'm trying to think if there's something that we could draw off of just drawing, like, a card. I can't think of anything. This would be a tremendous turn to have, like, Fractured on Siege Gang. Fractured Siege Gang, smack them for five, on tap, win the game. Don't have that though. And if we only draw one card, then we'll only have four mana. So that's not an out. No time walks in the deck. What if we draw two cards and find wins and wins Siege Gang? And we'll still be at ten, we'll take seven block one of these. Okay. I tried. Yeah, we were we uh, we could have beaten the Inkwell, huh? We could have beaten the Inkwell, but the Sea King just added that extra extra hurdle there. Could Muldrifter ever get back to standard? The issue with Muldrifter is that they'd have to be like, all right, it's time for us to do Evoke again. And Evoke, Evoke's a good mechanic. It was good in Limited and good in Constructed, and I can see them revisiting it. If they did revisit it, Muldrifter would be a great reprint. Hey, Ziski, thanks for 25 months. Ziski says, 25 months, you know what that means? Or do you? God, does this mean anything? Does anything mean anything? Keep being excellent thanks to the years of rad content. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Personally, I'm enriched by your sub. Sox says, why does the music sound all screwed up? What do you mean? What do you mean by quote, screwed up. When are we going to see Mana Drain in Standard? I don't think I don't think they want to print Mana Drain into Standard. I could see an argument for, uh, for unbanning it in Legacy, but it does not seem like a Standard card. Hey, Captain Mel Reynolds. Thanks for the 22 months. What up? Hey, Dr. Thundercock. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 37 there. Oh, shit. What up? Thought the music sounds fine. Hey, Stoic Axis, thanks for the 31. Axis says that we're, they weren't feeling very magical for a few months. But it's good to be back. Yeah, good to have you back. I'll cheers that. I don't have anything deep to say about Remastered. I'm a fan of the old board cards. All right. Are we gonna get Vintage Cubed two, two, uh, two rounds in a row?
definitely don't want the opponent in resolving draw sevens with the fast bond in play, huh? So fucking lutely not. We need a resto for our Glen or Flicker Wisp. Oh shit, what up? Hey Jimmy the Beard, thanks for the five months. Jimmy says, first time listener, long time caller. Thanks for what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jimmy. That one's fine. I think I'm gonna play a Krasis some shitty amount. It's a removal spell bubbles, right? The Sylvan Library. Sometimes you just have to cast your spells into Glen. Sometimes all of your stuff's worth countering. You just have to jam it. Considering evoking Muldrifter instead of casting it. Let's leave a green up too. What is that beautiful shit behind me? What do you mean? The art? That's Springloom Druid. Looks incredible in person. Also looks really cool with a, a black and white filter. Because the the glow on the hands and the um and the garden patch that's sprouting in front of him. 
provide like a really like absurd amount of contrast. Anyway, once this whole COVID business is done, I'm sure I'll have a party here at some point. Maybe the next time there's a Grand Prix in Madison. Viewers be welcome. Come over. Have some drinks. Crash at my place. Right now my house has three beds and a couch. And it's just me. It's, it's just it's just me here. It does give me an incredible amount of freedom in where I want to park my carcass. <laughs> Whether I want to pass out on the couch listening to records or or um in the floofy bed upstairs where it's warmer or downstairs with the TV, but Am I inviting you over? I'm inviting everybody over. Once the COVID business is done. Have a party or two here. We had a get together the last time there was a GP in Madison, but I was in an apartment then, which was a little bit harder. It wasn't impossible, but it meant that I had to restrict the, the size somewhat so it wasn't like too crazy. Yeah, whichever bubbles, whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harsh your mellow, whichever you feel like doing. Pizza party? Yeah. Have some pizza, fight some viewers. Exactly out for Arkbound Twerker. Now that's a party. Nobody's streaming Time Spiral Remastered. Uh, I'm not streaming it because tomorrow's the last day of Cube. And Time Spiral Remastered will be around for a bit. So hopefully people still want to play it on after Wednesday. Oh shit, what up? Hey, Naughty Trolls. Thanks the resub. Thanks the 19 months. Naughty, naughty. An Eldraine cube to bring. Yeah, it sounds fun. Oh, shit. What up? Hey, Snarky Zero. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for sharing the prime. Yeah, I've got a, I've got one game table set up that's like probably large enough to draft on. Oh shit! What up? And then there could be another table set up in the basement. The basement's finished and large enough. This is scary. So there could be two drafts going on at any given time. That's a lot of cards, isn't it? A lot of cards. Should we just scoop down? Just scoop to the value. Getting out valued. How do you win? Do we wear name tags with our usernames? That's what we did last time. I had usernames and Caleb tokens at the entrance. Hey, Dr. G Hero thinks the 17 months. Nice never didn't have it. Yeah, there's some board games here. Not like an infinite amount, but enough. What does a Caleb token do? A Caleb token strokes Chris Van Meter's beard. At least that's what I'm doing on the token. Well, was it a one-man? 
draw three. They had two one-mana draw threes. They were drawing six! That's, like, about as much value as a one-sided draw seven. Like, they might as well have had uh, Narset in play and played, played a Spiral. Do you want Ravages of War here for, like, after they dump their hand with Fast Bond? Probably not. I'm just gonna submit again. Can you take home a beard hair? You certainly can. But you should know that if you use my beard hair to clone a genetically inferior race of humans, I'm not financially responsible for them. That's my only condition. This hand is so bad. Like half the hand does nothing against them. Will I be emotionally responsible for them? Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a thing you want. Oh shit, what up? Hey, favorite hoplite, thanks to the sub, thanks to the 34 months. You've been watching more of the YouTube VODs recently, thanks for putting them up. Absolutely favorite hoplite. Yeah, I didn't have any go up this morning, because I was, um, I was busy pretty late last night. But I'll try and catch up. I think I'm going to be taking Wednesday off this week, so... There'll just be, like, more videos going up over Wednesday, Thursday than there usually would be. Fill that gap. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like a twister turn to me. I have no idea. Never didn't have it. No idea. Well, they sure played a lot of shit that I don't care about, so that's nice. We can't Shell Dock and Boros Signet and hold up Mana Drain, so we have to choose between the Signet and the Shell Dock. I'm gonna play the Shell Dock, I think. I don't know. Nah, I'll do the other thing. Well, yeah, I'll Shell Dock. Do we attack? With them for three, they can hit us back for five. They're at 17, though. Yeah, I'll just fucking pass. I feel like my seven had a lot more gas than their seven. I feel favored. Yeah. This turn we could have played the Boros... Well, no. Yeah, we could have played the Boros Signet and then used the Azorius Signet to evoke the Mole Drifter. That would have been slightly better. Then I wouldn't have, wouldn't have had to discard. I'd have a Signet in play. And then the Sheldock plus Island could be holding up Mana Drain Mana. I'll just say that I was playing around days. Yeah, 
Yeah, that seems believable. I was playing around days. Y'all wouldn't understand. the beats. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with going Skyclave here and exiling the Tree Speaker. I also don't think there's anything wrong with going ECD and exiling the Dryad. The Dryad fixing doesn't really matter a whole lot, like the Dryad's not, not doing a bunch, but it does set us up to rebind Moldrifter in a few turns. That's kind of relevant. Dryad not even serving, not even getting in there. Ooh, well that looks fucking unbeatable, huh? Resolves. And then we flicker wisp blink the tree speaker, I think. Or wins it, whatever. Wins it's probably a little bit better, because then you're leaving up the the Glen activations. Lost well, three two and ones in a row. But two of those were steps, so. Two and one while doing a step always feels good. 